What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can wipe out dino or dino flagellates out of your tank just like I did. So real quickly, I wanna talk about what dinos are. Dinos are a form of bacteria that take advantage of certain conditions in your reef tank to thrive. So the main things you need are five things to get rid of dino. The first one is time. I know everybody says that, but the dinos didn't show up overnight. They're not gonna get rid of overnight. So the things you're gonna need are silica, um, we're going to raise the silica levels in our tanks. Phytoplankton, we are going to dose phytoplankton. That's going to give another competitive source um, to take those nutrients so the dinos can't use it. Bacteria, beneficial bacteria. And we are going to use lowering lights and taking out certain spectrums. Those things all together and time will really give you guys the best chance of beating these dinos. So there's two main steps that you need to follow to start getting this process underway. Uh, the first one is figuring out what type of dinos you have and the second one is figuring out why you have dinos. Now there is a um, few types of dinos, probably about four or five, that all kind of have different uh, characteristics but for the most part they all look exactly the same in the tank. So what you're going to need is a microscope. I ended up going with two microscopes. The first one I got off of Amazon and I went way super cheap. You guys know I'm on a budget. Uh, and it worked, but it was a piece of crap. So I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but I went on Facebook Marketplace, typed in microscope, and there were tons of great options for super cheap. I ended up spending like 40 bucks and got a really nice microscope that I can use, and it worked perfectly. So once you get that microscope, the next step is to grab some water samples and figure out what kind you have. Now, I don't expect you guys to know what you're looking at. You'll be able to know what the dinos are. I'll show you guys. Uh, the dinos are gonna look like this right here. Uh, this is the kind that I have. This is Prorocentrum dinos. A little bit more uncommon, although it's kind of been picking up lately, I've seen in the forums. But you just need to be able to get a picture of what you have. Because the next thing you're gonna wanna do is join the Max Facebook group for fighting dino flagellates. This group is amazing. There are so many helpful people. They can help you identify what you have, help you figure out all your questions. Um, and it's just a really positive environment. I will link that down in the description so you guys can join that group. Now, these kinds right here are super easy to get rid of. You can just use a UV sterilizer. You don't have to buy a UV sterilizer. I know that's out of a lot of people's budgets. I found one for like $80 before I got my microscope that I thought I had the UV kind. Turns out I didn't. So that's why you, know, you don't wanna waste money on a UV sterilizer and it might not solve your problem. Either way, if you don't wanna buy a UV sterilizer, you can use these methods for all the types. It's gonna help either way. Um, but if you do wanna knock this out real quick and you are lucky enough to have one of the UV sterilizer kinds, you can pick up a UV sterilizer. Again, I'll link one of those, the one that I got in the description and knock them out pretty quick. The next thing you guys gotta figure out is why do you have dinos? It's almost always a nutrient issue. So you either have one of three things. Either both of your nutrients are at zero, your nitrates and your phosphates are at absolute zero, they are bottomed out. Sounds like a good thing, but you do not want zero, zero nutrients on anything. Believe it or not, that causes more problems. I know it's a fine line between having very little nutrients and having um, no nutrients, but you really don't want those bottomed out. So zero, zero is probably one of the more common ones, not what I had. Um, the other one is high nitrates, low phosphates, that is what I have, or the vice versa, low zero nitrates and high phosphates. So those are the three things, so I really recommend um, you test for those. Uh, I know a lot of people test for nitrates and not a lot of people test phosphates. The HANA phosphate checker is invaluable. Um, I really recommend picking it up. Again, I'll link one down in the description. I use it every week, um, sometimes more than a week, really trying to get those nutrients locked in. Uh, it's a great tool. So now we figured out what kind of dinos we have and we figured out why we have dinos. So the first thing obviously is going to be solve that issue. Um, if your nutrients are bottomed out, you know, you can always feed more, you can add more fish, you know, that, be careful with that, but you can add more fish. Uh, or the easiest thing to do is besides feed more. Some, sometimes that works great. You know, a lot of people enjoy feeding their fish. You can feed more. Sometimes that doesn't help at all. I, dump, I just had two fish at the time. I had my feeding and it didn't really do anything. Besides, I was dealing with high, one high and one low and that didn't know. So believe it or not, a lot of people end up having to dose nitrates and or phosphates. So that's what I did in this case. For some reason, my nitrates stay at around 20. I know that sounds high, um, but they do. They just stay around 15 to 25 all the time. You know what I do? I've dosed bacteria, you know, I've run different things. 
by the new, but my phosphates run super low. Even though I feed pretty heavy, I feed pellet foods, uh, I have it on an automatic feeder, but so I end up having to dose phosphates. Now I'm dosing Brightwell's Neophos, uh, the instructions for dosing are on the thing. This is where again, you're gonna have to have a tester to figure out what you're testing, but you need to solve the issues, so whether it's high nitrates, low nitrates, high phosphates, low phosphates, everything's zero. You've got to figure that out because these steps are only going to help so much. Now we want to outcompete the dinos. That's how you're going to get rid of them without a UV sterilizer. You have to put other organisms and bacteria in the system that is going to use the nutrients in the available stuff in the water better than the dinos. And the best thing that's going to outcompete the dinos is diatoms. I know it sounds similar. Diatoms are not a bacteria, but they're typically that brown that you get very early on your tank, like in the first month and it goes away on its own. It's just part of the ugly stage that you get on a reef tank. The way we do that is we dose silicates. Um, if your silicates are a lot higher in the water, it's going to increase the chance of a diatom bloom. Sometimes you might not even see the diatoms appear. They'll just kind of outcompete each other, like what happened to me. I never really, saw, I saw a few on the microscope, but I never really saw them. But you want to dose silicate. Now the silicate I use, I'll link down below in the description but it is super cheap and you can kind of dose it. Now, there's a couple things to consider when dosing silicates. The first one is you're really not gonna overdose silicates. Um, many people have, have really seen super high numbers in their tank and not seen any issues. So you really don't have to worry about that. Just follow the instructions um, from that PDF in the Facebook group and it will show you how to dose your silicates. There are a few things, however, that you need to consider when dosing silicates, two main things. One, if you are using that HANA phosphate checker, it will give you an abnormally high reading. For some reason, just in that checker, it will give you a high reading. So you need to get a different phosphate test kit if that's one of your issues that you're monitoring while you're trying to fight this to make sure your phosphates stay out. I use the Sallyfert test kit. Uh, it worked really good. It's kind of hard to see, but it gives me a baseline to make sure I'm not at zero. The other thing is it's going to affect your alkalinity consumption. It's going to lower your alkalinity consumption, meaning your alk is going to go higher than normal. So if you're dosing alkalinity, you're going to want to monitor that almost daily to make sure your alk's not slowly rising up and you can keep your alk stable. We know alk is super beneficial for the reef tank. All right, so we are dosing silicates and trying to get that diatom bloom. Another organism that is great for a reef tank in general, but also good to help fight dinos is phytoplankton. Now, phytoplankton is it's a, a plankton, it's an organism that almost all your corals feed off of, some of your fish feed off of, the bacteria feeds off of, and it, it is just a, a great thing to be dosing in your reef tank. Again, it's another thing that's gonna outcompete those dinos. Uh, you do have to be careful and monitor your nutrients when using it, you don't wanna start dumping a bunch in. Follow the directions, slowly build up how much you're dosing, and you're gonna notice a lot of beneficial things in your reef tank. Now, one of the last things you can do to get, again, give more organisms to outcompete. The more we can outcompete the dinos, the quicker and the better it's gonna be, is dosing a beneficial bacteria. Now, when you cycled your tank, you might have added bacteria, so a lot of people do. Um, this is kind of a similar thing. You want the nitrifying bacteria that's growing in your rock work and your sand bed and helping dissolve those nutrients. You wanna boost that population up. This you're gonna do, I did by Microbacter 7. Um, there's a bunch of different bacteria products. They all work great, but I love the, the Brightwell line. Uh, Microbacter 7, Microbacter Clean. If you're dealing with super high nutrients, then you can use that. Uh, follow the instructions for the high nutrient system. It'll have you dose it daily for like a week. Uh, for me, I did not, so I was just following the weekly dosage of one dose per week. Follow that. Again, it's going to help the system establish. You can keep doing that after your dinos go away. Same with the phytoplankton. It's going to be beneficial for your tank and keep that diversity of stuff in the tank. Another thing to consider is to lower your light period. So if your lights are on for 10 hours a day, like mine were, I bumped it down to seven hours a day uh, and one hour on each side was ramping up. Uh, here's my graph right here of my lights. I use the H HD primes. And you also want to, if you can, a lot of people run all white lights. If that's, if that's the case, you know, you don't have to change it. I run blue, blue lights with just a little bit of white. So I cranked my whites to zero. Um, there's been studies that shown that the whites really help the growth of that algae and that uh, diatoms. So while, you know, I didn't keep my whites very high, I did turn them completely down to zero, just again, just to help, every little bit helps. So definitely tweak your lights a little bit. Um, this goes for any algae problem you also have too. Shorten your light period while you're fighting it because it'll give it less chance to grow. The diatoms do need light. 
um, to an extent to grow. Uh, so that's something to consider. And the last step is just to wait. Unfortunately, like I said before, this is a process that you didn't get into overnight and it's gonna take some time. It took me three months to fight it. You know I don't have that kind of patience. I would clean it all out, I'd vacuum my sand bed and then it would all be back right away in like a week. Uh, you guys can see here, you know, it just takes over the sand bed and a lot of times the rock just depending on your system and it can really be discouraging. It actually was getting on my corals for some time, uh, mostly my soft corals and, and killing them. That's why I was so worried about it becoming an issue. You, know, you can look in an ugly tank, but when it starts to affect stuff in the tank, then you've got to be careful. But it's going to take time to get out of this mess. I promise you, just keep following the steps. Uh, for me, it kind of just happened three months and then almost went away overnight. So it was kind of crazy. Normally when you leave on vacation, you worry about your tank. Well, I went away for a week and I came back and the process had finally taken over and you'll kind of see it happen pretty quickly once it finally goes away. But all of my dinos were gone when I got back on vacation. I was amazed. They started to come back a little bit, but then they kind of backed off. So just give your tank some time, leave it alone besides these steps and let it settle out. And I promise you, you will be able to beat these dinos. There is some things that you might hear that help. You know, a lot of people try and black out their tanks. Um, while that can work depending on the type of dinos, it can stress out your coral. If you have coral, you know, it's just, it's found that it's not super helpful in the long run. It can help, but it just, it might have more negative impact. Uh, the dinos go into the sand bed a lot of, in the rock work a lot of times at night anyways. So, you know, it's probably not necessary doing that. The other thing some people might say is raising temperatures. Again, a lot of people in the group that I've been talking about, the Max group, they haven't really seen that on a consistent basis while well, it might help. And again, that can stress out your tank. So you don't necessarily want to do that, but you guys, you guys can beat this. Like I said, it's just going to take some time and knowledge and you know, other people's help, you know, getting information, but I promise you guys will be able to beat this. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys take the time to watch this channel. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next week for another video.